Hello students, so in criminology and penology, today we are going to discuss, today I am going to take a session on transportation of criminals. So, uh, there was a time when the criminals were, 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 the punishment for the criminals were their transportation to a certain place. So, transportation for life, which involved sending of a convict into a banishment or exile, had been authorized as one of the form of punishment for certain serious crimes by the East India Company government under the general regulations long before the said punishment was enacted in the IPC in 1860. Lord Cornwallis sent the first batch of Indian convicts into banishment to Ben Cullen in S.W. Sumatra in 1787 at about the same time when England started transportation of convicts to Australia. Uh, of this penal settlement, it was reported 30 years later that the convicts rarely desired to return to their countries and they were encouraged to marry, formed connections in the place and found so many inducements to remain there that they practically became colonists. colonists. Indian convicts sent, were sent to Singapore penal settlement, were under no restraint and received no support and were allowed to provide for themselves. They differed in no respect from free population of the place, excepting that they had to give security for a parents whenever required. About Andaman Penal Settlement, Penelji quoting a letter stated 8 February 1856 of Captain Henry Hopkinson, Governor of Arakan states, prisoners at first would have to be employed in making the station with its road, barracks, public buildings and jails and when completed, those who had not forfeited the privilege by misconduct would receive ticket of leave and be allowed to labor for their own property. Such other settlements were also established at Panang, Mauritius, Maulmain, Tanasarim, and Malacca. So, punishment of transportation for life was one of the exile or banishment to an appointment locality for the whole or the remainder of the convict's natural life unless the convict's sentence was remitted by the government. If the government intended to imprison such convicts in jail, they had to do necessary commute such sentences to one or rigorous or simple imprisonment under Section 55 of IPC or 402 of CRPC 1898 for a term not more than 14 years. Parliament by passing the Amendment Act 1955 upon the recommendation of the Joint Committee did not intend to change the nature of punishment previously called transportation for life but now it is called imprisonment for life and by keeping it separate from the pre-existing punishment of imprisonment rigorous or simple including retaining the old places or open air convict settlements for sending life convicts from prisons for undergoing their ten sentences of imprisonment for life there. The amending, amending Act 1955 merely changed the name of life punishment without altering its meaning so much so that imprisonment for life was not included even in the definition of the term imprisonment. Under Section 3, Clause 27 of General Clauses Act 1897, similarly, if the appropriate government intended sentences of life imprisonment to be served, by imprison imprisoning of convicts in jails, they have necessary to commute such sentences to reduce imprisonment for a term not exceeding 14 years. Therefore, it follows that a person sentenced to imprisonment for life cannot legally be made to serve a term longer than one, which aggregated with the period of remission earned amounts to 14 years. Thank you.